Hey guys, my name is Tiger Shu, and I'm with Pacific Rim, and we're here at the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival, and we're with one of the great filmmakers here. What's your name, sir? Tanush Chopra, one of the great ones. <laughs> one of the great ones. So, uh, Tanush, what's your film that you're going to be showcasing today? Uh, we're, we're doing uh, Chi and T. The film's called Chi and T, and it's about the last two brown guys in Silicon Valley who have nothing to do with technology. Wow, wow. Okay, so... Uh, uh, I heard there's a little bit of a, of a crime drama type scenario. Can you kind of expand on that a bit? Well, yeah, it's, it's about two debt collectors who have to take their boss's nephew and get him into a new suit and a new haircut and, a, and a new shoes uh, for his engagement party. And so it's sort of about, you know, the, 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 he, but he, it turns out he happens to be like a Tasmanian devil. He's like this total train wreck. And these guys are sort of these throwback, nine, like kind of stuck in the mid-90s kind of guy. And, and, and this millennial terror, terror shows up. And... Um, it's, it's, it's sort of a sequence of unfortunate events that end up sort of getting them to the, you know, a very precarious predicament. And um, there's, I don't want to say there's like, it's not a crime movie per se, but there's like, there's elements, there's fringe elements in the film. So is it like maybe like a dark comedy or? Yeah, it's actually probably pretty straight up comedy with a, a, dra a dramedy maybe, like there's comedy with a dramatic feel to it. So like a, like a Weekend at Bernie's only with computer, no, I'm just messing with no, you. No, I, I've pitched it, I've, said, I've always said it's like it's Weekend at Bernie's meets Do the Right Thing, like <laughs> divided by, uh, 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 well I would say divided by Stranger Than Paradise, Jim Jarmusch's first film, but I don't want to nerd out and be like a film nerd here. Hey, it's okay, definitely nerd out, you got the Optimus Prime t-shirt, I got the Bruce Lee tie, we're nerding here, we're nerding hard. So let me ask, um, I mean, this is a very different subject matter, you know, not only uh, as an Asian American, you don't see a lot of South Asian representation, I feel, in film. How did you create a story like this, not only, you know, focusing on South Asians, but also Silicon Valley and everything that Asians are doing there? Well, it's, I mean, it's a good question. I mean, a lot of what we wanted to do was tell a story that was very universal. Um, we didn't want to get caught up in making a, a movie that was very too culturally predetermined or just spoke specifically to... Um, you know, like like one South Asian experience. I mean, I think what we wanted to do was create a film that was universal. It, our film honestly could be played by all black people, all Latino people, all uh, uh, you know, it could be an all Chinese cast, and it, you'd probably get a similar kind of film. Um, the 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 idea, the goal is to 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 create a brand of comedy that's universal that anyone in America can can watch and identify with. And if it happens to be an all brown cast, that's great. But it's really about the characters first and not necessarily representational politics in the film. Cool. Um, and that being said, would you say as an Asian American filmmaker, uh, have you had any struggles because of that? Or, I mean, we all hit sometimes that glass ceiling or we have uh, our race becoming an issue. Anything happen with you? Absolutely not. Never. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, it's, it's always, it's always um, you know, it, it, you always wonder how relatable your ideas are when you pitch them to maybe mainstream Hollywood executives. Um, sure, there's always opportunity, like, you know, my, you know there's, there's, there's things I think about in my career all the time, like, well, am I where I would be if I was, uh, you know, maybe part of the mainstream race? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's also, it's a double-edged sword. I feel like the things that hold me back maybe um, to being understood in the industry formally are also things that I draw from from my work are also places where that make my work different. There's also, there also gives me the ability to tell stories in the margins. And to be honest, like, uh, I get so much pride and so much joy from representing these stories that, you know, you know, should I be, you know, directing the next Fast and the Furious? Absolutely. Yes, but um, if I'm not, if, if that opportunity isn't given to me, you know, because of whatever reason, um, I, I think it's, it, it's, it's also an advantage to be able to have my community to tell stories from. Well, I don't see why you don't do a Chi and T2 electric boogaloo or, I mean, wh what's next for you then? I mean, Chi and T, this sounds like it could be a franchise even, right? What are the plans? Is it going to be the next Batman Robin? I love you, man. <laughs> you want to be my publicist? <laughs> I need you around me all the time. Um, yo, Chi and T, well, it's, it's funny you say that because we, what we want to do with Chi and T was make the kind of movies the studios would want to make if they knew that, that, if they could envision it, you know what I mean? Um, it could be a sequel. It could be an, a spin off or... or I don't know if it's, in, if it's about making another G and T per se, but there's a brand of comedy that we're that we're working on that I'm thinking, I'm hoping that you know maybe can be can be grown, can be taken out into you know I had a feature here last year also called Grass. Um, it's like a female version of Harold and Kumar, and it's another kind of comedy. It's another Asian American comedy that um, also has a genre bent to it. And I and um, whether it's, whether it's that these movies get sequels or we're building towards another distinctive film that kind of. Could be a, um, 
could have a bigger impact in the in the in the Hollywood marketplace. Um, yeah, we're open. that's the direction we're going in. You know, you have our support from Pacific Rim of video. I think Chi and T could be the next Fast Eight. There's yeah. got to be like 20 of them. You know, then a reboot. You know, and then Michael Bay will get it and they just put explosions in it. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of a slow three, but <laughs> but I'm still down. Well, very cool. Uh, so, you know, lastly, where can we find you? How can we support the film? Uh, where can we find you on social media? What can we do to help Chi and T become? I think the, be the best thing, to, you know, we gotta we're, we're going to be distributed. Uh, we got a deal through a company called Comedy Dynamics. So when it comes out on you know, Netflix, Hulu, all the platforms, like watch it, write about it, check it. Go to IMDb and click 10 stars. Ten, it says, even if you haven't seen it, it's a 10 star film. Uh, go to uh, Chi and T, the, uh, at Chi and T Twitter. We're on Facebook, join, like, click, like, and just generally support Asian American artists. Like, go come to these festivals and watch, not just G&T, but watch. there's so many great films here. I, I don't support. Oh, yeah, they need to be support. I, I don't see why we don't do uh, Spinal Tap, crank it to 11 stars, right? I mean, come on, let's, let's get this, right? We need 11 stars. It's, it's, it's a 12 star film. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Thank awesome, you. I know, I know you guys. It's Chi and T.